In my recent video about closed loop stepper motors, I mentioned there's also cheap ones that rely on magnetic encoders for position feedback, and how I didn't think those could be very precise, but a lot of you commented that magnetic encoders can be very precise. But shortly after that, Great Scott released a video involving magnetic encoders, and he showed the output from one, and it didn't seem to jump around very much, so I thought, maybe these things are quite good. And so I bought a couple of AS5600 boards off of AliExpress, they didn't cost very much, but the only code I could find online for using those was for Arduino or Raspberry Pi Pico. And I much prefer the real Raspberry Pi because I can just run Python code on there for my experiments. So I just wired up the I2C lines to the ones on my Raspberry Pi and then tried I2C Detect and sure enough it showed up. I guess this wired up correctly then. So looking at some of the Arduino code I found, this is for reading the angle out of this thing and looking at the specs didn't seem that complicated. And then I wrote my own routines to do it from Python on the Pi. Nine lines of Python, that's all it took. So I'll put my code for how to do that onto GitHub so people can find it, or you can just type it in. And when I run that code, I get some pretty random values, but that's because this thing is expecting to read the orientation of the magnetic field. And without a magnet, it's just picking up random stuff. So if I place a magnet near it, then the values become much more steady. But conveniently, this thing also came with a little 4mm round magnet, which has got a sideways orientation, which means it'll orient itself to a magnet under the desk sideways like that. This magnet is also sideways. So as I slowly rotate this magnet, it'll just keep increasing the angle. Now this encoder doesn't just give me the angle, but also the magnitude, so I thought, why not just plot that on a Cartesian plane, sort of as a vector? So I wrote a little bit of code to do that. So if I place the magnet on the chip and rotate it, I should get a circle on the screen. But what I get is hardly a circle at all. So I mounted this magnet sideways using some Lego. And let's try that on the chip. And it's quite responsive. I can spin that magnet really fast. But I have to stay very close to center, otherwise that circle gets really wobbly. Now I'm kind of curious, what kind of accuracy am I likely to get with this thing under realistic circumstances? So I made this little thing so I can mount the magnet on the end of a stepper motor and I can control the angle quite precisely with that and then put that in front of my sensor. And I think this is as good as I'll get the alignment without making precision parts. So let's get some readings around the full circle. And plotting those angles against each other, they follow very nicely, so good. But if we look at the difference, that ranges from 0 to 4.5 degrees. Not good. So I tweaked that position a little bit and ran again. And now the overall range of differences is just 1.4 degrees. But there's definitely a ripple in that, and looking at just a short segment of that, it has a periodicity of 4 steps. So the large angle swings that happen over the course of 360 degrees, I'm pretty sure are due to the angle sensor and alignment with the magnet. But those small ripples? Those are coming from the motor for sure. Now these stepper motor drivers, they can also do micro-stepping, which is going in between the steps. So I configured it for 1 8 micro-stepping, so 1600 steps per turn. So I ran the motor for about 200 micro-steps, which is only about 25 real steps. And for each one I read the angle, and this is the difference between the angle that I read from the encoder versus what I was expecting from the motor. So we get a range of about 3 divisions worth of error, which is about 0.3 degrees. And then, to smooth that out a bit, uh, because this is cyclical roughly every four steps, so I average samples together that is with every fourth step, and that would be the dark curve, and we can see an amplitude of about this much, that's 0.15 degrees. That's roughly the uh, micro-stepping error, that is the uh, stepper motor's micro-stepping doesn't actually position the motor where it's supposed to be. And then the purple line is just averaging eight samples, and that essentially is sort of the, the pole error of the motor as in some of these poles are a little bit out of phase, and that's also 0.15 degrees of error. And then I tried the same thing with this closed loop stepper motor. With its driver built in, I figured it knows the characteristics of the motor much better, so it can micro-step more accurately. And it runs really smooth, so I figured this might be more accurate. But, looking at the graphs, this is the old stepper motor, and switching to the uh, closed loop stepper motor, you can see that variation is a bit smaller, but not hugely so. It's maybe two-thirds the error as the other one. And why do I care about errors of 0.3 degrees on a stepper motor? Well, I had this idea of using a stepper motor as sort of like a uh, dividing head for positioning gears for gear cutting. 
And at that point, 0.3 degrees of error actually matters. And the thing I just realized is these holes are 16 millimeters spaced. That works out really nice with Lego stud spacing. And if I expand those holes a little bit, that actually fits on Lego studs. And that makes it real easy to position the magnet right in the middle of that chip. So I have the sensor board mounted here, magnet jammed in the end of this. And with that rack and pinion, I get a linear position transducer. 